Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me at a sometimes sunny, sometimes rainy spot here in uh, North Wales, next to my board and my normal spot here at Lion Rock. Um, one minute it's spitting, the next minute it's sunny, and I'm trying to do this to avoid as much of that roadworks noise as possible. I've been waiting in the sun for ages, uh, but I thought if I wait any longer, it'll be 2025 until they actually stop making any noise. That's my head in. I'm a grumpy old man. I'm, I'm old enough to call myself that, and I'm okay with that too. You can see from having the sport board here, this, uh, this is what I used to teach, like cleaning sport routes and stuff. It's great to be able to take it to a crag. I've seen like too many people being taught how to strip a sport route when they're like 20 meters or 60 foot up in the air and you've got like a boyfriend or girlfriend shouting to the opposite person, do this, do that. And it's always a really horrible thing to watch because a mistake is like, you know, fairly consequential, isn't it? A lot of crags these days, have like a chain set bolted into part of the wall low down. And I really like that. It's a great place to practice, isn't it? Ground level. Just having this means I can do it anywhere though. I want to talk about setting up top ropes on bolted anchors today, all right? It's coming up to the school summer holidays and stuff. So there'll be lots of parents taking kids out, uh, many other, you know, um, circumstances as well. But I thought it was a nice thing to look at. What we need to avoid is top roping through the in situ stuff. Really important that. It puts over time quite a lot of wear onto it. And these things, they're not the most expensive things in the world, but it's about 25-ish pounds per sort of chain set. And almost more than that, it's the time that it's taken someone to install them and the time it would take for someone to go up and faff around um, replacing them. Even if they're kind of got malons on them, they're often glued shut to stop people stealing them. It's a sad indictment of the world, isn't it? But that happens. Uh, so they've got to go up, have a faff, replace it, the time, the effort, the money, all that kind of stuff. Equippers invariably spend a lot of their own money on stuff like this. In the UK, at least, it's quite rare for there to be sort of proper outside paid support for that. But there is a lot of donations. So you go into any outdoor shop and there'll be like a bolt fund donation for the area, a little box you can put your cash in. So worth supporting if you do a bit of sport climbing. I'm sure that's the same in other countries as well. But we definitely want to avoid that. So we've got a few options that we'll look at. Almost the simplest and most kind of, probably the most common to see really at a sport crag is just using the quick drawers. You can put one in each bolt. I've gone underneath the, the ring. It, it just seems to sit a bit better on this particular bolt, type of bolt. And you can get your rope. You can clip it into one. You can clip it into the other. You lower off and there you go. You've got a sport route set up to a uh, top rope, haven't you? They don't have to go underneath. It, you might find they sit better on top. You know, whatever works okay. Here, they're pretty much equalized, aren't they? If it was on this setup over here, wouldn't be equalized. I just don't really care. Assuming the bolts and everything are of good quality, I'm not worried about equalizing the same as I would be on a trad setup, right? So that's okay. That would be the most common thing I'd do. If I was working a route, um, I will often put a quick draw in the bolt below and have that clipped into one of the ropes as well. So even if something went completely catastrophically wrong here, which thankfully is super rare, then you'd have some redundancy in that sense. I do like these to be opposing though, just in case the rope does go over, perhaps when the person climbs up and they lean back, even if this, what, this is pretty rare to happen, but I can see it happening. There's a case in the States where something similar to this kind of might have happened recently. I say might have, because it's a little bit unclear as to what did happen. But if that did unclip, Okay, well, I'm still on one, aren't I? One is better than none. What could we do to completely avoid anything like that being possible, though? Well, not use uh, snap gates. You will see people, I don't have any, but you will see people with what we call lock drawers. So instead of having snap gates, you'd have screw gates. That could be a really good idea, couldn't it? Do exactly the same as what I've just done, but everything is a screw gate. That's a whole nother level of safety, isn't it? So lock drawers could be a really good idea. Just make a couple of those up yourself, no drama. Consideration, isn't it? We could put a screw gate in there. I'm doing it on top just because it's a bit quicker. Uh, screw gate in there. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? And this is pretty much exactly what I've just done with the quick drawers. 
sorry, the board amplifies all the noise. There you go, that's grand. Here, I think that would work okay. In some setups, they sit in a way that can twist the ropes a bit. So I'm a little bit hesitant to do that version quite often. What I might rather do, it's like the rain a little bit, has hardly rained here in the last month or so. So as much as I would normally moan about the rain, it's most welcome. I just bought a load of new plants for the garden as well. So they'll be enjoying a bit of rain as well. So where could I go instead that's gonna be more twist free and friendlier on the rope? I could go into there, couldn't I? There you go. As long as that ring is solid, we're away. It's a screw gate, that's good. You'll see a lot of instructor type people putting a second screw gate on and opposing it. So you obviously clipped in and done up and into the ring. The reason for that is the rope going over two carabiners bars is a bit kinder on the rope. It just makes it last a bit longer. If this is an occasional thing, that's probably not really of any consequence. If in a group sense, uh, we're talking about going out every day and doing the same thing, your ropes are gonna last longer by doing that. The slightly more important, if, you know, I'd say more important thing, is the second carabiner gives an extra level of security as well. The main reason being, right, if this is dangling in space with the rope through it, great, not a lot can really happen, can it? That's not always the way though, is it? Sometimes they're sat on rocks. So what if it rubs on that rock, jumping around, and eventually, I know I'm exaggerating this, it comes undone. That's not great, is it? If you've got two and they're opposed, it's really unlikely that both will be able to rub on the rock and open that barrel. So it could give you that level of security as well. And I've never seen this next one, um, but I've had people tell me they've seen it happen. I've no reason to disbelieve them. They've actually seen people climb up uh, and get near the top, maybe it's like here, and look down and they're a novice and think, sod that, I'm not flipping, getting lower back down there by my mate who was messing around. And they've started to undo the carabiner to take the rope out to climb over the top. So it might buy you an extra few seconds. Hopefully you'd spot that and um, you know it wouldn't become an issue, but you never know. Two carabiners could be a good idea. A full belt and braces thing that you might see, well, you will see it, is just going full like trad mode almost. Getting your screw gates, putting a sling in, doing them up, another one in. Do that up as well. And then you've got a choice of ways of doing that knot to make it independent and everything. I do quite like these blue ice ones though, for they're made, made in a tubular way and they're quite sort of shiny. And I find that they don't um, get welded shut so easily as some other slings do. So they come undone easily at the end, which is nice. So I can chuck my carabiner into a master point. I can clip that in. I can put a second carabiner as I've just been discussing and away you go, okay? There might be a time when that's an advantage as well uh, if there's not a um, chain there, well, I can't clip into a center point, can I? So I might have to do either two separate carabiners like I did or link them like this to get rid of the twists and things. So that might be a consideration if you're somewhere it's bolted, but they're not linked with a chain or something else other than that. All of these methods, they're all good, used appropriately, but they do require the experienced person to go up and then strip the root at the end, which is fine. Nice excuse to climb sometimes, isn't it? But equally, it might just speed up your day to have a little cheat method where you can pre-thread it. I've done another video on this yonkies ago. I've done a lot of videos. Um, but I do quite like this one, so I think it's worth showing again. Now I've said we should not top rope through the in situ gear but I'm going to thread it now we said that's bad isn't it so what I need to do is make sure this doesn't get weighted so I get myself a screw gate flip it in there do it up and now you can see what's happening is yes the rope is touching that metal thing the metal ring but it's not under weight all the weight is going onto that carabiner so that's almost an irrelevant amount of wear happening there isn't it some setups this works better than others. Work quite nicely here as well, wouldn't it? Because I could have one in there, the rope would run up through that. Here works really nicely though. And then when the last person goes up, 
all they need to undo is that carabiner there. Take the rope out, take the carabiner with them. It's pre-threaded, they lower away to victory. So that's a nice way of doing it. You want to be sure that they're, you know, on it enough to be able to cope with that at the top, not like completely petrified and stuff like that. And perhaps they're not on a nice little ledge where they can do this really happily rather than having to give them a bit of slack, quickly take it out, quickly take in, you get the idea. The key thing though, is remembering we really, we've got to avoid top roping through the in-situ stuff. There's just not really an excuse for it. There's a few setups there. Of course, there's other variations, but that's a general overview. You could click them into different places and whatever, but just give it some thought. And if you've got a couple of those methods up here, then you'll be sorted for every lower off, whether it's here, the States, Spain, or wherever it might be, okay? By the way, with any questions, as always, you know, I'm happy to answer as best I can. I get back to everyone eventually, it just takes me a while sometimes. Um, you can support the channel by clicking the like button, smashing the subscribe button, find us on Insta, Facebook, using the buy me a coffee link. All the support is massively appreciated, as I say every time. Also, as I say every time, massive thanks for watching. More videos coming up very soon.